As I enter the cafe, I sweep my gaze across the room and spot a man wearing a dashu jacket. That must be him. After ordering a cup of coffee, I walk over to greet him. Hello! The man faces me, and I'm surprised by how young he looks. He only seems to be a couple of years older than us. I'm Siler, the pilot for Eagle from Ace 204911. He smiles and gestures to the seat across from him. I accept the seat. Thanks for meeting me on such short notice. As I'm sure you know, I'm Yuri Aryev, your account manager with Dasho. Well, I know that now. A waitress places our drinks on the table. He takes a sip from his drink and seems pleasantly surprised. That must be some good coffee. Hopefully it's that same place that we went to before that everyone really likes. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I am curious about a few things. Well, I definitely feel on the spot now, but go ahead. About Eagle? Eagle? I just said that was my gear. He looks genuinely confused. I guess my intel was incorrect. No, about hyperdrive. The heck is hyperdrive? Hyperdrive? That was the team I played for at CINY. Looks like Yuri did his homework on me. Answered my own damn question. Sure, ask away. Someone wants the inside scoop. I'm still under their NDA. Uh, Non-Disclosure Act, got it. I almost asked, what is the NDA and Non-Disclosure Act? But I wouldn't think for something like that. Much like with any college sport, I'm sure you could talk about, you know, just how practices were and stuff. But you know what? Sure. Ask away, Yuri. I'll try to answer the best I can. He smiles. I am more interested about the team and sponsorship dynamics in the West. I've researched that companies have official teams in the school rather than just sponsoring a different team from time to time. I can understand wanting to learn a little bit more about that. It sounds like things are done very differently in the States. I nod. That's right. Hyperdrive is an S-ranked division team at CINY. That's quite the accomplishment. I can see why you transferred into ACE with a history like that. You know, that's just step one of the process. Hard work paid off. I'm a natural. I was just their primary backup. You know, no big deal. You know, ah, uh, well... I don't even really know what our background is here. I guess we can kind of make it up here. Hard work paid off is my initial guess, but no, it's just their primary backup would always be another one. But, you know, hard work and determination usually gets the job done. So hard work paid off. Thank you. I've practiced a lot and studied to make sure my application was strong from both sides, on my piloting side and my academic side. Yuri seems pleased by my answer. What were your teammates like? Hyperdrive had about 20 pilots on the team. I didn't know all of them well, but I made a few friends. Yuri takes another sip from his coffee. Ah, yes. I've heard the official company teams tend to recruit purely from an efficiency and winning standpoint. There's even internal competition within the team to see who are the strongest pilots. Sounds a lot like any other sports that are around here. You just kind of recruit when you get off to the university level, and then you're on a team that way, and you still compete for a starting spot in something like football or basketball i nod which means your solo rank must have been strong if you were the primary backup after the starting four okay so it looks like for maybe saying the primary backup was a, could have been a good thing too but we'll see yeah although i can't say everyone was pleased with the first year being a primary backup yuri chuckles i take it the more senior members of the team weren't pleased Yep, because of that, most of the people I considered to be close were other first years. But some of the seniors who were already on the starting lineup would help me train. Sounds like there was a very split dynamic among the team, which is not surprising given how large it is. It's hard to foster close camaraderie when everyone competes for the same spots. Amen to that one. That's why it kind of seems like it's better here at Ace because they have a lot of teams that everyone can just take a part of, and you make your own team, essentially. You're not put on a team. There were definitely a lot of cliques that formed within the group. I tried to stay away from any drama and was just focused on bringing up my rank. How well do you think that model works compared to the model here? I pause. The pressures are different, but I do believe smaller teams make more efficient teams. You're more invested in your personal training and development. 
not because there's a looming pressure that someone is just a number away from replacing you, but because you're an important member of your team. And, of course, you end up fostering closer relationships with your teammates. Exactly what I just said. But the whole sponsorship process here is incredibly imbalanced. Not no. Yuri nods understandingly. Honestly, I'm grateful you agreed to sponsor us. We were rejected a few times before, and Yuna was really disappointed by how unwilling most companies were to consider us. Uh, your team at Ace is a little unique. Even though you guys are an s rank division team, because you're a new team with no history of performance, you're also considered high risk. High risk? Yeah, it's hard to gauge whether your team is a strong up-and-comer or if your entry into this division was a fluke. Most companies don't like that uncertainty. If that's the case, how come you decided to take that risk? He grins. I like that grin. I know good talent when I see it. This guy gets it. Someone, I'm buying this guy's coffee if he hasn't paid for it. I'm buying this guy's coffee. If I had been too afraid to take risks, I never would have landed Yudai. When I signed him on, he was a new pilot, but already showed so much potential. I'm going to pretend like I know who Yudai is. He looks wistful. What happened to him was tragic. Now I'm curious. The least I could do is to help his sister, especially after seeing how his death affected her. Wait, what happened? You don't know? No, there's a confused look upon my face. He falters. You should probably talk to Yuna. It was you, is, was, is, based on how they're talking, was, was you die Yuna's brother? I know she's got some strong points about pilot health and safety, but I didn't know what her brother's name was. The plot thickens. Oh, um, sure. An uncomfortable silence settles while we both sip at our drinks. Once he downs the last of his coffee, he checks his phone, then smiles politely. I have to run to another meeting. Thanks again for stopping in to chat with me, and I'm sure we'll see each other soon. I'm looking forward to it, Yuri. This was a lot of fun. Thanks! It was nice to meet you. I say my goodbye and take another sip of my drink as I watch him leave. What happened to Yuna's brother? How come she never mentioned him to me? Probably because I never asked. Questions race through my mind, but I clear them away as I finish my drink. I shouldn't drive myself crazy thinking about questions I don't have the answers to. The next time I see Yuna, I'll ask. If she's willing to talk. If she's not willing to talk, stop pressing the issue. In the meantime, I still have some time before I should go home. What should I do to clear my mind? Uh, I wanted Mayu. You know what? Let's let's talk with Kauri. We haven't had a chance to talk with Kauri, and she really doesn't like us all that much. The match against Anabugeisha lingers in my mind. I've watched some replays of their past matches, and they are predominantly a melee-oriented team. My best practice against them would be to practice with Kauri and Aura. Not a bad idea. Gotta practice against your teammates just to kind of see what their falters are on the field. Plus, then you'll improve, too. She doesn't answer when I call, but I make my way to the hangar anyways. When I arrive, I see Kari is already in a simulation match. No wonder she's not answering her phone. After grabbing her attention, she agrees to play against me. I boot up Eagle and enter into a simulation with Aura. Fight music! Hadouken! What? Aura thrusts forward with an aggressive stab. Uh, Juke City! I easily dodge her attack. Her gear loses balance and stumbles forward. Counterattack! Eagle uses counterattack. It's super effective. Aura has fainted. Da 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 da! I mean, has been depowered. No Pokemon references here. None whatsoever. Again. Okay. Kari's frustration is audible through the comm. This marks her fourth consecutive loss. She's playing too aggressively and not planning out any tactics. Let's take a break. 
No. We need to keep practicing. It's not being efficient if you're constantly making the same mistakes because you're not thinking straight. I'd like to take a break for a minute. This really isn't practice for me. No. You are sucking too much. Um, you know, I'd like to take a break for a minute. I need to get a drink. We can continue after. Fine. Yeah, that's right. Aura disconnects from our virtual simulation. I do the same, then hop out of my cockpit and reconvene with Kaori at her gear. Her arms are crossed and she has a sour look on her face. I don't think that's any different from her default expression. Kaori. She looks up at me. I'm not sure what that was all about, but we can't have that happen in a real match. You think I don't know that? She looks annoyed, but sighs anyways. It's just, we absolutely can't lose to Ona Bugiesha. We won't? What's the big deal anyway? Then get your head in the game. You know, what's, what's the big deal? I mean, we don't want to drop a match, but what's the big deal? What's so important about beating May's team? It's nothing to do with May. I blink at her heated reaction. Um, I never said it did. With Strike X being disqualified from our original match, we have a rare chance to really jump our rating if we beat Ona Bugiesha. I'm not fully convinced that's the only reason, but she does have a point. Then we'll give it our all. Kaori nods. Her spirits seem to be lifted. I'm glad we got that sorted out. Kaori nods, but can't quite hide her yawn. She covers her mouth, and after taking another look at her, I notice bags under her eyes. It looks like she's used makeup to cover it up so I wouldn't notice, but I still did. Kaori wears makeup. Someone stayed up all night. I mean, why would we be surprised that Kaori wears makeup? But, you know, someone stayed up all night. I knew it. You're a closet party girl. We should hang out together if you want to do the nightlife scene. Seriously, how can you still be this dumb after all this time? Very easy. Don't lie. I can see the bags under your eyes. What bags? Oops. Someone's not been getting their beauty sleep. Actually, now that I think about it, that explains why you're cranky all the time, too. Yeah, I deserve to get hit for that one. I rub my fresh bruise. Already used to her doing this. I thought you were tired. Where did all that energy come from? Let's get back to practicing. Fine. You're the boss. We head back into our gears and load up another simulation match. Kaori is more focused than before and no longer making such rash decisions. Ultimately, we end up getting a solid training session from our duels. Before long, it becomes late and we say our goodbyes before heading home. As I enter the house, I hear soft giggles coming from the living room. A tuft of blonde hair peeks over the couch. Another wave of giggles floats from the couch, but cease abruptly as I step closer. Vicky hangs up the phone and turns around to greet me. Hi, big bro. Sup? I plop down next to her. Who is that guy? Her eyes grow wide. How did you know it was a guy? Who else could it be? You just told me. Just stare at her. Oh, I'm really tempted just to give her the stare of just... Come on. We all know. Come on. Uh, I think we're just going to end up going, uh, who else could it be? I'm psychic. No, you're not. You've never giggled on the phone before. I wasn't giggling. The blush in her cheeks tells me all I need to know. So, who was it? No one. Doesn't sound like no one. He's just a classmate. I reach around and grab Nikki's phone while she's distracted. No, give it back! My phone now! I'm looking through this! She screams in my ear as she leaps over me, reaching towards her phone. I fend her off and keep the phone away from her grasping hands. 
As soon as she, as she continues to struggle, I worm my way off the couch and flip through her call list before she can scramble to her feet. The last dialed number is to a Ken. What kind of weird Japanese name is Ken? Nikki snatches the phone right as I speak, then pummels my chest with her fists. Oh my god, you are such a jerk. I asked a simple question. Is he even a real person? Of course he is. I don't believe you anymore. But his name is Ken. <laughs> You're the worst. Or the best. She hits me hard one last time before turning on her heel and storming upstairs. When she's halfway to the top, she pauses. And by the way, Ken means strong in Japanese. Okay, I, I don't see where that was relevant to anything, but whatever. Nikki stomps into her room and slams the door. Oh yeah! Oops. Still, Ken! <laughs> I hear laughter. It's not my laughter. Is that me? Did I just laugh out loud? Nope, it's Uncle Kaito. Kaito is leaning against the doorway behind me, a broad smile on his face. I jump when I see him. How long have you been there? First Akira, and now Kaito? How is everyone always sneaking up on me? <laughs> That's good. Ken is a funny name. It's like... <laughs> I don't know what your deal is. How am I related to you whatsoever? He continues to laugh at his joke, then gradually calms down. Why does your face look like that? Like what? I always look like this. No, like this. He mimics a look of cringing and disbelief. Yeah, that's, that's about accurate. I don't... What? I should go do my homework. Good idea. Get smart. So I don't turn out like you? I slowly head towards the stairs, still unsure about what just happened. As I walk up the steps, I can still hear faint chuckles from Kaito and the echoes of Ken, Yen, ah. Oh, Kaito. You crazy, crazy uncle, you. Since I was already in my room, I caught up on studying until it was time for sleep. Quick little study session. Can't argue with that. Gotta get smart. Otherwise, it'll turn out like Uncle Kaito, and we don't want that. I'll wake up energized and throw off the blankets. Today is our match against Anabu Geisha, and I'm looking forward to it. I run through my morning routine, thinking up strategies in my head then try to refocus as I finish my breakfast. I still have a class to attend before my match. It's gotta ruin the flow of everything. I grab my bag and hop on my bike. There's an unexpectedly heavy amount of traffic this morning and I rush into class right on time. That was a little too close for comfort. As I settle into my seat, the professor clears his throat, beginning the lesson. Good morning, class. For today's lesson, we will discuss the differences between energy and kinetic weapons. Sounds interesting. Skip. That sounds interesting. Let's first review the two defensive mechanisms of a gear. The shield and hull. Alright. The hull is the physical gear. The shield is a virtually invisible barrier generated by using the core's energy. The strength of the shield varies greatly depending on the core, shield generator, and power allocation settings. Energy and kinetic weapons are meant to target opposite defenses. Energy-based arsenals are effective against shields as they quickly drain shield energy. But because of that, they are weak at penetrating the hull. That makes a lot of sense. Alternatively, kinetic weaponry is designed to puncture the armor, but they are weak against shields as the kinetic energy gets dispersed over a large surface area, the entire shield. For the purpose of war games and recreational use, only energy weapons are permitted. A gear is considered destroyed when it is depowered. Of course, outside of recreational combat, this rule does not apply. Oh, absolutely. An actual war? No, but energy weapons make sense because, again, as he just said, not going to destroy the hull, so it doesn't really risk the pilot anything. A student raises his hand. 
What about hybrid weapons? Ah, yes. Hybrid weapons are able to equally damage both the shield and hull. However, their damage strength is not as effective as a singular purpose weapon. The student nods in acknowledgement. Please turn to page 233 and let's take a look at the different types of energy weapons. I flipped to the page the professor mentioned and continued listening to the lesson. Learn a bit today. That's all for today. Please make sure you have all completed your web link assignments for next class. Yes, sir. I pack my things and head to the hangar to meet up with my team. Our match is scheduled earlier than usual and we need to rethink our strategy. The plans we discussed had all revolved around our match against Strike X, but now that they're disqualified, we have to come up with new ones against our new opponent. We should have probably been planning that out as soon as we found out about it, but granted, I don't remember how much time has really passed, nor is it really said. Probably a couple of days? Still, I enter the hangar and look for Aura. When I arrive, everyone is already there. Show waves. Rosa? Show? Hey! Hi! Hey, Mayu! Carrie greets me with a nod. I nod back. Hey, she's smiling, though. I'm not gonna argue. Good. We're all here. Let's head to the pre-combat room and start planning out strategies. Hey! Oh, hi, May. We collectively turn at the sound of May's voice. She waves and beams at us as she runs closer. What are you doing here, May? I mean, this is the hangar. Probably getting ready for the match, too. Carrie sounds less than amused. I wanted to wish you all good luck. I'm so excited for our match. That's nice of her. Me too. Mayu smiles and nods. Let's give it our best. Who needs luck when you're this good? Stay quiet. You know what? Let's give it our best. Good luck to you guys too. We won't hold back. May smiles. We won't either. I wouldn't have it any other way. As quickly as she arrived, she's gone in a flash. She's so nice. I'm totally feeding off of her enthusiasm. I'm getting a better vibe off of this match, too, than the one off of Strike X. Yeah, this is definitely a good thing just to have that camaraderie there, because while we're all competing to be number one, you know, we still want each other to do well, and it should still be a friendly competition. No! No? She blinks at Kauri's outburst. No? She's just putting on an act. She was trying to psych us out. Don't fall for it. I, I don't feel psyched out. I don't think that was her goal. You guys don't know her like I do. You can't trust her. Especially when she's acting all friendly like that. I'm going to make my own decisions, thank you very much. I remember the heated conversation I overheard between Kauri and May. This must be related. Anyways, let's go strategize while we have some time. She doesn't wait for us to answer and begins power walking towards the pre-combat rooms. Wait for us! We jog to catch up and follow her. That was odd. After a quick change into our pilot suits, we meet at the holodesk. Kari sets up the match. A few minutes later, the holodesk projects the arena and the gears involved in the fight. Alright, so what's the deal? Onna Bugiesha is a melee only team. It will be important to pay attention to our positioning and maintain a safe distance. Agreed. We've had close combat teams in the past. Claw of the Wild comes to mind from a few weeks ago. Mayu is focused on the holodesk and takes a serious tone. Claw of the Wild was a melee-centric team, but their gears were knitted to perform a hybrid role. Based on Onabugesha's data, their gears are all custom tailored for high bursts of speed and close combat engagements. We would benefit greatly from keeping a distance. If we play defensively, it will force them to chase us, and we can wear them down before going on the offense. Makes sense. If they're wanting to be a little bit on the aggressive side, let them do so, because they'll then get impatient when it's not working, which will make room for mistakes. So it'll provide them mistake. They'll make mistakes, essentially, and then we can strike. What do you think, Brosif? Agreed. Range is key. Let's go for a Super Smash Melee Brawl. As much as I'm down for Smash, range is key. Be patient. Play the slow game. I don't think these are timed. 
take advantage of it. Let them get impatient. If they can't hit us, they're going to try to force things to happen and make a mistake. If they have no ranged weaponry, we should do as much damage from afar as we can. Whittling them down before fully engaging will give us the advantage. Sounds good to me. Mayu and Kauri both nod. Okay, well, we can all go ranged, but Aura can't. The team looks at Kauri. I'll engage Mei head on and keep her out of the fight. That kind of goes against our plan. To my surprise, Kauri grits her teeth and bites back a retort. She studies the holodesk for a little too long, then sighs. I guess I don't have much of a choice. I'll hang back with you guys and intercept if one of the enemy gears manages to break through. That's really what we're going to need. Separating from the group's going to be bad because then all of them can turn on you. Mayu nods. I think that would be best. Okay, let's recap. We'll play it from a distance and keep baiting their team. Since Mayu is our best shot, we'll keep her well protected and follow her lead. Absolutely protect the range, Carrie. Carrie looks right at me. She finally looks more focused than I've seen her all week. You and Sho can play aggressively if we take the lead. I will intercept whoever reaches Mayu, if they even manage to. Good plan. Got it? Yes. We all nod. The tension is palpable. Even though Kaori is always serious, her tone is more aggressive than usual. We have a rare opportunity to really boost our MMR, and we can't throw this chance away. No, we can't. There's absolutely no way we can lose to Mei. Um, uh, you mean Anabu Geisha? That almost sounded like a threat. I nod a little uneasily and glance at Sho and Mayu, whose faces mirror my thoughts. Kari turns back to the holodesk and uploads our plans as we wait in silence. A loud beep announces the match. I mutter under my breath. Saved by the beep. Mayu, Sho and Mayu seem equally relieved. Just make sure you guys stay focused. I should say the same to you, Kauri. Of course. Sho forces enthusiasm into his voice, attempting to raise our morale. Kauri ignores him and Sho deflates. Well, I mean, he, she typically ignores him. Let's go. All right. That was sufficiently awkward. We enter the arena from one side while Anabu Geisha enters from the other. The crowd erupts into a loud cheer. Good, because we have an amazing one lined up for you. Oda Bugisa versus 82049 11! Alright, let's do this. Everyone's comms are open as we await the sound off. Mace team gets into position and wait with relaxed confidence. I'm sure they're very confident. They're probably thinking, let's end this early. Just come in, swoop in hard, hit them hard, we're done. Meanwhile, we're just kind of sitting there. Okay, let's do this. Nice and calm and relaxed. As we also get into formation, the tension I felt from before intensifies. This no longer feels as friendly of a match as I thought it'd be. Thanks, Kauri. As soon as the sound off blares, May's team dashes straight towards us. A faint shimmer surrounding their gear reveals a hefty frontal shield. Mayu raises her gun and takes aim while the three of us position to protect her. A heavy round flies into one of the gears in the distance. Although the shot connects, it disperses into a hexagon of shimmers. What? They're shields! They're tailored to deal with rail rounds. I need the shield to be weakened so that my shot can penetrate and force an immediate to power. So she did some damage to the shield, but not as much as we want. Affirmative. I'll stay back and protect. You two go aggressive and focus on knocking out their shield. Got it. Let's go. Roger that. Switching to EMP rounds now. Skitter away and fire. Show and I boost forward, spraying a hail of energy rounds. Suppressive fire. The enemy team takes evasive maneuvers. Mai breaks away while the other three continue racing towards Mayu. Nice shot, Mayu. The closest enemy gear takes the brunt of the damage, and its front barrier drops. 
Mayu takes advantage of the vulnerability and aims a shot at the gear, instantly depowering it. Nice! One down! I have two of them approaching me. Howdy? Howdy! Where is she going? Of course that's where she's going. R has already left her position and sprints towards May. What are you doing? You have to protect Mayu. I am. I'm taking out May so she can't attack. Yeah, there are two other ones. That wasn't the plan. You two cover her. We are not in position to. <laughs> ah, we're already too late. She's already engaged. Let's go. Adjust on the fly. Show and I boost back to Mayu, but it's too late. Depowered. Her voice is lethally calm. This can't be good. The two enemy gears shift to show and I. Two on two, but not much distance. Play this out carefully. Yes, sir. For once, show is serious. The gears split their focus on and one of them charges towards me while the other boosts towards show. I boost away and take aim. Uh, hit. I'm gonna take a hit. My aim is true, and a blast of energy rounds collides with her gear. She stumbles back from the hit while I create more distance between us. Hit and retreat. Hit and retreat. Hit and run. Hit and run. Before she can strike again, I move away to create more distance between us. I raise my guns for another shot. Fire. She tries to dodge, but it's too slow, and my shots pellet her shield. She's pushed back from the force of the blow, but once she gets her bearings, she boosts right back towards me. As she approaches, I boost away from her and weave around the arena, forcing her to chase me. Ste I steady my aim. Fire! She's too slow to dodge, and my, strike and my shot strikes her right through her shield. Her gear can't support the hit, and she's depowered. I look over at Sho just in time to see an enemy gear strike. Watch out! I boost closer and shoot again. The round connects with the gear just as her attack connects with Sho. Sho blocks just a second too late and he's depowered. But she wasn't expecting my attack. She left herself vulnerable and is also depowered. Damn it. Could have saved him. May is the only remaining enemy gear. One more gear and the match is ours. You got it. On it. I boost towards Kauri and Mei, who are locked in a duel. Aura strikes with vigor, but is parried. Mai retaliates with a wide swing, which Kauri barely manages to block. I'm here. Don't interfere. Um, this is a match. I'm interfering. Huh? What? What do you mean, don't interfere? Yeah, what you're saying... May is going down in a one-on-one. -on -one. She won't have any excuses this way. Excuses for what? It's this a team, a team match. match. You can't put a win in jeopardy because you want to make this personal. What should I do? Don't interfere, engage. It's a team match, as Mayu just said, and I said at the same time she did. We're here as a team to win. It's not a one-on-one -on -one duel. If it was, I wouldn't interfere, but this started as a team... It ends as a team. I'm engaging. Eagle bursts into action. What are you doing? I am not going to sit here and let her take me out. I'm going to strike back. Anticipating her swing, I sidestep using my thrusters and counterattack with my own blade. With no shield activated on her back arc, my swing completely depowers her gear. Nice one. Show is the only one to speak. Guys? I'm just kind of sitting there acknowledging my victory. Or our victory. Wasn't just me. Our. Mayu and Kari are both silent. Aura sheaths her blade and exits the arena. Hey, at least we're still undefeated. The crowd roars to life, but their excitement doesn't penetrate the friction clouding our team. I hate to rush our competing teams, but we have another match in just a few minutes. Please clear the arena. Got it, Mr. Announcer Guy.
May's team heads back to their pre-combat room as we head to ours. When we enter the pre-combat room, Kauri is nowhere to be found. She must already be changing. Sho and I go to change, but Mayu stays back. She must be really upset if she's actively avoiding Kauri. Yeah, she must be. Man, I'm not liking the vibe right now. Yeah, neither am I. It shouldn't be this way even though we won. Were you expecting me to hang back? I didn't say that. I probably would have done the same if I were in your position. Hey, it was a team thing. No hero plays. Hero plays are bad. It's in the past now. Yeah. Sho and I finish changing and head back to the pre-combat room. As soon as we enter, Kauri stomps up to me. Mayu is nowhere to be found. Why did you do that? Do what? I told you I had it, but you engaged her anyway. How is that a bad thing? Isn't the goal to win the match? Yes, but that's not what I mean. Out with it with what you mean. Then what do you mean? She frowns. You don't understand. Because you haven't told me. How could he? You aren't making any sense at all. Kauri tenses and glares at Sho. I don't have to explain myself to you. No, Kauri. Uh-oh. Mayu's back. And she doesn't sound happy. We turn around to see Mayu. Her jaw is set and her eyes are hard. I've never seen her this upset before. It's chilling. Kauri's eyes widen. Mayu? You put your personal agenda above the team and risked the match. That's right. Don't you say anything. Our positioning was compromised, and I had no support. Those two were out of position because of an aggressive call that you made. That ended up costing us two depowered gears, one of which was avoidable. So no, you do owe us an explanation. Her voice is calm but severe. Mayu's ice is a lot more nerving than any of Kauri's fiery outbursts. This is getting out of control. Back off, Mayu. We're waiting for an answer, Kauri. You know what? This... Ooh. I'm not entirely sure here. It is getting a l Granted, it's not really getting out of control. And, you know, I, I can understand the behavior that everyone is. Uh... I don't want to necessarily tell Mayu to back off because I agree with her. She's absolutely right. We do need an explanation as to why she's acting this way. It was a bad call. At the end, it worked out, but it was still not a good call. Just because you win doesn't mean the call was right. But at the same point in time, I don't actually, I don't want to tell her to back off. You know what? Let, let's see if we can calm things down. Things are definitely a little heated. We want things to calm down and we can talk about it later. This is getting a little out of control. Let's all take a deep breath and calm down. They ignore me and continue to glare at each other. Kauri looks between the three of us, then sighs. I get it. I made a mistake. But I can't be expected to always make the perfect calls. No one's expecting that. We don't expect that from you either. But when you start throwing the blame around... I'm sorry, okay? Although she snapped her apology... I can tell it's not because of a lack of sincerity. It's because she's not used to apologizing. It would help if you meant it. She does mean it, show. Don't push it. Kauri clenches her hands into fists. I said I'm sorry. I messed up. It was my fault. Blame me. What else do you want? Let's drop it. She already said she's... she's she already said sorry. Show crosses his arms, but nods. At least Mayu seems to have returned to her normal demeanor. Okay. We usually celebrate as a team after a win, but I get the feeling that won't happen this time. After packing up our stuff, we exit the pre-combat room. May is waiting for us outside, leaning against the door. Hey guys, congratulations on the win. That was a crazy match. I glance at May, barely registering her presence. 
I'm too wrapped up with what happened to the pre-combat room. My smile falters when no one answers. Wow, with gloomy faces like that, I'd think you were the ones that lost. Shut up, May! Oh, okay, that was very harsh. May flinches from the ferocity of Kauri's voice. Uh, I was just kidding, Kauri. This is all your fault! May is stunned into silence. You seriously need to calm down. May didn't do anything. You're being too harsh, Cowardy. Cowardy's eyes flash. You guys are taking her side? I thought you were my teammates. We are, but you're acting crazy. I'm not taking anyone's side, but since the match, you've been acting like a complete... Show, you don't want to finish that statement. Show catches himself and falls silent. Kauri looks at him. A complete what? Nothing. Good man. I mean, it's already too late, but... Good man for not actually saying it. She pauses. When she finally speaks, her voice cracks. I see. That's how you really feel. Show's look softens. No, I didn't mean that. Kauri turns to face May. You. She lowers her head. You always turn my friends against me. We're not against you. She spins on her heel and walks away. When she thinks she's out of eyesight, she starts running. Kauri. Kauri disappears. Sho is about to rush after her when Mai blocks his path. I have to go apologize. I didn't mean what I said. Tensions were high. We all said some things. It's okay. May sighs. You need to give her space right now, or you'll just make it worse. Uh. She looks torn, but doesn't try to follow Kauri. I don't think I've ever seen her too upset to yell. Mayu looks down worriedly at her feet. I was too mean to her earlier. I'm sorry. You guys shouldn't blame yourselves. Kauri just needs time to cool off. Oh, yeah. Amaya wasn't too harsh earlier, either. You sound like you speak from experience. May sods and sighs and nods. What's up with her saying, you always turn my friends against me? It's a long story. Something that happened back in middle school. Wow, that's a long time ago. Something to do with Ryota? Possibly. You two go way back. Yeah, we do. May's pocket vibrates. She pulls out her phone and reviews the message. My team is wondering where I am. Don't worry too much about Kauri. She'll be okay. I'll talk to her when she's calmed down. We, w we nod and watch May head out. I don't feel any less guilty. I shouldn't have acted that way earlier. No, we did we did need to call her out on her BS. No, it was my stupid comment. I never should have said something like that. That one did push her over the edge. I guess they still feel guilty too. Let's give Kauri her space. I'll go check on her. You know what? We'll give her her space. We'll trust May on this one. Let's give her some space. We should listen to May. She's known Kauri the longest, and it sounds like she's had to deal with this situation before. We should give Kauri some time. Sho and Mayu glance at each other, then nod. I'm still going to apologize. Me too. I mean, I will too. It's something we need to do at some point in time. We can do that tomorrow as a team. Okay. An uncomfortable silence settles in. Although we haven't lost a match yet, I doubt it would f make us feel any worse than we do right now. There's no point in hanging around here feeling guilty. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Bye. I wave and head to my bike. Whew, that's rough. The entire ride home, I run through the events leading up to Kauri's departure and come up with multiple ways we could have handled the situation. Hindsight is always 2020. The house is quiet when I arrive home. And I'm a little relieved as I'm exhausted. So I head straight to bed and fall fast asleep.
been a long day. Physically, mentally, and emotionally. But today's a new day. I turn off my alarm and stretch, then let out a groan. Yesterday was a really intense day, and I'm certainly feeling it now. At least it's Friday. The bright side, the silver lining to everything. With a regretful sigh, I roll out of bed and prepare for my classes. I grab a quick breakfast and drive to school. Yuna is waiting for me in class, and she smiles broadly when I sit down next to her. Hi, Yuna. Hey, sorry we haven't had a chance to catch up. How did your meeting go with Yuri? It wasn't as bad as anticipated, even though he asked a lot of questions. About Eagle? No, he was interested in my team back at CINY. She blinks in genuine surprise. Oh, I was under the impression he was curious about Eagle. It's okay. I didn't mind. Clearly he did his homework about how teams are run in the States because he didn't seem surprised by anything I shared. Yuna nods. There's a reason why he's the youngest account manager to manage a team at Dashu. Because he's good? Have you talked with him yet? Yes. He said that you show a lot of promise, and he's confident that if the rest of your teammates are as determined as you are, then you'll definitely be a force to be reckoned with. We're already a force to be reckoned with. That's it? Her, her frow... She froze her brow in concern. Yeah. Should he have said anything else? I guess he was serious when he said I should talk to her about her brother. Actually, maybe now isn't the right time to bring up this conversation. It's talk about it later, absolutely. It's time we ask, but now's not the time. Bombarding her right before class begins doesn't seem like very smart timing. The professor will get here and start class before we really have a chance to talk, and Yuna will probably spend all of class stressing out about this. Nope, yeah, just checking. Yeah, how he's clearly into me. No. Yeah. No, just checking just to see if there's anything more. We had a good conversation, so I was just wondering if he had any other thoughts. Oh, no. But I'm glad to hear you enjoyed the conversation, too. He seems like he'll be easy to work with. Yuna nods. He is. I glance at her and nod. The professor enters the room and gets settled. Good morning, everyone. Please open your textbooks to page 81. I don't like that page. Your assignments are on the web link. Have a great day. Yuna and I pack our things and walk out of class together. Do you have another class to go to? No, but I have to meet my physiotherapy professor. I'm a TA for his class. I didn't know you were a TA. Yep. I don't usually help out in his Friday classes, but he's holding exams today, so I need to be there. Do you have any other classes? No, but I'm kind of hungry. I'll grab lunch in the pilot's lounge. Her face lights up. Oh, you're lucky. They're supposed to have really good food. They do, and they have options from other countries. I had a cheeseburger once from there. Yuna's eyes grow wide. I love cheeseburgers. They are delicious. Doesn't the dining hall serve them too? She wrinkles her nose. I don't think what they serve in the dining hall can even be considered food. Not no. Where do you eat lunch? The hot dog cart. Not a bad thing. Oh yeah, I forgot we had a hot dog stand. I didn't know anyone actually ate there. You should try it. They're so good. If it's not a Chicago dog, I don't want to try it. You really like American food, don't you? Yes. Yuna checks the time. Oops, I'm going to be late. I'll see you later. Bye. I wave as she dashes off. Alone, I make my way to the pilot's lounge. I check out the menu on display in the lounge. There's the usual Japanese fare that I can find in the dining hall, too. Today's special is Napolitan spaghetti, popularly known as ketchup spaghetti. The bartender approaches me and waits expectantly. Hmm. 
Order Napolitan spaghetti. Choose something safe. I think I lost my appetite. You know what? One in Rome. Give it a try. It's a special. And Yuna just said we have some good food. One in Rome. Am I right? Or I guess in this case, one in Japan. One Napolitan spaghetti, please. The bartender nods. He brings me my order and I take it to an empty table. As soon as I sit down, someone slides into the seat across from me. I'm ready to apologize and ask if this table was taken when I take a good look at the girl smiling at me. Mayu? May! Is this seat taken? Um, uh, yes, by you. Uh, no. You can sit here. Thanks. This is a little uncomfortable after what happened yesterday. I think she feels it too. Um, have you talked to Kaori yet? No. I figured it would be best to give her some space. I haven't seen her that upset since. She hesitates. Since Ryota? My blinks, but seems relieved. Oh, Kaori told you about Ryota? Sort of. I'm not about to tell her I was listening in on their conversation a few days ago. Did she say it was all my fault? It was certainly implied. May sighs. <sighs> I wish I'd never said anything. I blink. May doesn't strike me as someone who has many regrets. She's always cheerful and seems to take whatever life throws at her in stride. I believe you meant well. Thanks. If only Kaori could see that. I wasn't trying to ruin her friendship with Ryota, or my friendship with her. They would have been so cute together. You know, if Ryota hadn't been such a jerk. And how awesome would it have been if my two friends ended up together? It would have been a good time. Sounds like you were excited for her. I was. Even back then, Kaori was more reserved around people. She didn't like to show her feelings. So I was so excited when she told me she liked Ryota. If he was such a jerk, why were you friends with him? He wasn't always like that. Honestly, I don't know why he exploded the way he did. We used to do everything together. His family even took us on their vacations. I knew him back in elementary school when he still had huge glasses and would tell goofy jokes that were too smart to be funny. Kids used to pick on him a lot. So we entered middle school and he worked hard to change his image. He lost the glasses and became more serious. The more I think about it, the more I think he stuck with us out of obligation rather than true feeling. We were his only friends for a long time until he hit his growth spurt. Then all the girls were suddenly interested. May looks thoughtful. Actually, I think it was when the other girls started to notice him that Kaori liked him too. Do you still keep in touch with him? Of course not. Okay, sorry I asked, jeez. She hits the table for emphasis. I told him all that stuff in confidence, thinking maybe it would give him a push to make a move. Well, he made a move, all right. He went out of his way to hurt Kaori. What kind of friend is that? That's not a person I want to associate with. Fair point. It's just frustrating that Kaori would lump me into the same category as him. That sounds like you're... This explains so much. Why even bother? You know, that just sounds like you're kind of jumping to things. I could see that. May raises an eyebrow. Don't tell me you agree with her. No, no! You don't sound anything like Ryota. I mean, I can definitely see Kaori jumping to conclusions. She's just so stubborn, too. She wouldn't even listen to me when I tried to explain. She does have a fiery hot temper. Then, why do you keep trying? May looks at me as if I've sprouted a third arm. She's my friend. I left her alone for a while so she could cool off. And I admit, I was angry at her for a long time, too. But then I saw her withdraw completely. No one should be alone. 
I know she hasn't forgiven me yet, but she will. How can you be so sure? It might take her a little longer, but in the end, Kauri always sees reason. Once her emotions die down. Maya is completely confident that Kauri will forgive her. This must be how she can still act so familiar with her, even though Kauri doesn't reciprocate those feelings. I have to admit, I kind of admired May for that. Anyway, since I really didn't get the chance to say it yesterday, congrats on your win. I blink. Oh, thanks. But don't get used to it. Anna Bogatia has a lot of practicing to do. It won't be that easy the next time we battle. I wouldn't have it any other way. You call that easy? You're still gonna lose. This was a good fight. You call that easy? I wouldn't say that was easy. Your team put up a good fight. May grins. I know. Humble. From the corner of my eye, I spot Carrie and Sho enter the pilot's lounge. Sho's still alive in one piece. They must have worked things out with each other. That's a relief. Kauri searches the room and briefly makes eye contact with me before glancing away. Then, to my surprise, she walks over to us. Sho follows. May is just as surprised when Kauri and Sho sit with us. What's going on, Brosif? Not much, dude. How you doing? I see you're still in one piece. Not much. Where's Mayu? Class. Lame. I say we go crash it. I'll look over at Kauri. Hey, Kauri. Hi. She looks sideways at May. Hi, May. May doesn't react right away. Then squeals in delight and throws her arms around Kauri. Hi! Oh, dear Christ. Uh, May! Stop it! Kauri pulls away in a huff while May laughs. That's how it's gonna always be. The four of us continue to chat together. The tensions felt from yesterday are completely gone, as if the day never happened. May even got Kauri to laugh. Imagine that. Eventually, we all go our separate ways as everyone heads to the class or other obligations. I still have some free time, and we'll spend that free time in the next episode. I'm going to end it here. As always, though, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button down below or leaving a comment. It really does help me out. And if you are new to the channel or have not done so already, Unleash your power by hitting that subscribe button down below today as well, and I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.